Hey everybody, Mark Lundholm here again uh, from the show. Listen, I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of people in my career in different formats. Uh, today, special segment here. I've never ever had this situation. Uh, today, we're gonna we're gonna interview the serial killer. I, I should be nervous, but for some reason, I'm not. Um, coronavirus. Listen, I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm going to be very respectful, but we ask some hard, hard hitting questions here on the Mark on Home Show. We do that of everybody. It's nothing personal. I hope you don't take it personal. Uh, your media rep said that you might not answer some questions, and uh, I get that. It's got to be. Uh, I'm wondering how the attention and, and fame or infamy and has affected your personality. Uh, okay. Boy, I've met friendlier spiders. So where are you originally from? Easy one, softball question. Where are you from originally? Uh, traveled all around the world, I understand. Uh, favorite place? Any favorite destination? Hang out, get some sun. Just the cruise ships. Okay. Ah. Uh, you, uh, you, you identify as a Mr. or Ms. I don't know really what to, it, last name, virus, I assume it's hard to date. Tinder pretty tough for a virus, is it? Uh, just a hunch here, first thought, right, is maybe that's why you sneak up on people. I hope I'm not hurting your feelings, at any that you have. Uh, what do you say to... Uh, boy, this is awkward, but what do you say to the folks who, who, who would accuse you of picking on the older people? Older people. On cruise ships. Okay, uh, I'm going to have the tech guy check for, uh, let's see. Hello? I, I, I see you're wearing a mask. Now, is that for your safety or mine? Because... I'm, oh, yeah. Silly me. You're immune. Yes? Okay. Wow. Uh, I don't usually struggle this much. Um, uh, do you have a nickname? Uh, is it C19? Is it Vid? Uh, people close to you. Pe I'm guessing not a lot of people close to you anymore. At all. Well, okay. Uh, let's see. Maybe an easy one. Uh, we, we've got some uh, baby pictures of you, much younger. I take a look at those. Boy, you've you've aged quite a bit there, Senor, Rita. They. What do you identify as really uh, uh, as a uh, uh, fruit? I'm not. Uh, man, I don't know if I'm. Okay. Uh, last question here. You your your rep said that your calendar is very full. Where are you headed to next? So we know. Just. Whew. All right. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love to say it's been real or fun, but it's it, neither for me. Uh, vid. Uh, Rona. All right. Let me tell you something. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to ask for a 10 minute head start before you move from that chair. Okay. Time to go. <laughs> ah! Ah what the f Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a short break. Break, break. Wash your hands. At least. I'm wearing a condom when we come back. <laughs> Hey, hey, oh, we're still rolling. Listen, Mark Lundholm Show, free on YouTube, big debut soon. We waited a long time to do this. You don't have to wait at all. Check it out, Mark Lundholm on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. <laughs> See what I told you? Mm. Whoa, hydroxychloroquine tastes sweet. Sweet.
Hey everybody, welcome to the Mark Lundholm Show. This show has my name on it, but it's yours. It's about you, uh, the collective you, all y'all at a certain part of this country. They include you, them, us, we, in a very uh, colorful phrasing. Uh, I've been to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where they say yuns, you know. Uh, it means more than just me. That, I think, is the pull or the draw of a show like this. Somebody asked me a long time ago, why don't you have your own sitcom? Uh, why don't you have your own HBO special? Uh, lately, it's how come you're not a Netflix person yet? Uh, I, I don't know the answers to those, except that I think the universe finds us when we're ready. Somebody said, well, you can make a million dollars doing a podcast, or you can have a million followers. I, I don't know about all that. Um, I, I just want you to like me. I mean, not like me. I mean, I want you to like me. I want you to like the show. I want you to, to like the content. You can, you know, but I want you to like the accessibility, the the authenticity, the the real kind of person that's talking to you and listening to you when it's your turn to talk. Um, this show is going to be about us, uh, the challenges and the choices and the consequences and the benefits and the beauty and the focus and the talent. Um, I'm looking at a lot of those things right now as I see you. You're looking at a small piece of that here. I get that. Uh, I, I'm a comedian by trade. That's what I do for a living. Um, but, but if I wanted to tell the truth, I could tell somebody, the IRS, occupation, comedian. Yeah. But I could write, occupation, man with a mental illness who's done a lot of felony time so he can learn how to market those things as a skill so he can pay a lot of child support. That's what I would write on that little tiny line there. But uh, that would be a little too much truth probably. As a person who's going to get to do a show here, and, and who doesn't have a show right now? You know, the hostess at the Embassy Suites Hotel, she has a podcast, all right? The Mark Lundholm Show, you call it what you want. I just want you to watch it because we're going to have guests. We're going to have phone calls. We're going to have live. We're going to have edited versions. Uh, we're going to have movie clips because I am a movie guy. I love film. We're going to have music beds. We're going to have uh, uh, a contest. We're going to have uh, chances for you to be seen, heard, visible, uh, uh, elevated to a, a huge place of significance where uh, you can take uh, 55 seconds, three minutes of your own life, and you're a YouTube clip now. We're going to give stuff away. T-shirts, coffee mugs, internet courses, um, CDs. Uh, we're going to give stuff away. Uh, uh, MP3 downloadable huge chunks of video. We're going to give stuff away just because. Why? Because every once in a while the universe hands you something. What you do with that is your gift back to the universe, but that's a different episode of a show. So I think it's important to tell you that uh, I've always, always, always been a talker. Um, as a street guy, 120 pounds, shake and bake, look and cook, tweak and peek, thump and bump, living under a bridge guy in Oakland, California in the 1980s, I would have a process, a system of survival on the street. Everybody does. Every homeless person has a system of survival on the street. Some people will recycle aluminum or glass or, 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 or cardboard to try to you know, trade in for money. Some people will um, sit there with a sign that says something clever, something not, but just, hey, I need your help, put it right there. Um, mine was, I would approach people on the street trying to walk past me and I'd go, give me a dollar and I'll stop talking to you. <laughs> now, They'd put a dollar in my hand, and I'd keep going. If they had children, I'd ask for $5 because parents are more protective, and they wanted to give away more money to get more space. It was fast. I was manipulative. I could always, always, always talk. Now I make a living talking. Um, I don't even think that's fair on any level. Uh, but it's ironic that I used to get paid a dollar to shut up. Now because I speak... Um, and, and, and I'm learning how to do it better, I hope, every year. Uh, my kid goes to private school, and I, I have a bit of a life to share with people I care about. Um, you're part of those people, uh, the people I care about, or the reason I'm doing this show. Um, I, I think it's important that we develop some muscles, our humor muscle, let's say. 
God gave us a humor muscle to develop. Uh, it, it grows and swells and is useful, or it atrophies to the point where if somebody tried to be funny, somebody else gets hurt. Funny makes you feel better. There's a part of the brain that goes, wee, yeah, okay. Even a numbskull, Neanderthal, knuckle dragon, old guy like me can figure that out. A little behind the scenes look at the Mark Lundholm psyche here. Not that you asked, but I think it's fair to tell you, I've got a disease. I've got a, a brain stain. I've got a problem wreck up from the neck up that I am, and it's called first thought wrong. If you hurt me, I have to hurt you. First thought wrong. If I drink a little bit, I'll be okay, even sober a long time now. Uh, first thought wrong. If I don't get caught, it wasn't criminal. Criminal don't mean bad. Criminal don't mean wrong. Criminal means caught. Isn't criminal bad? Not if you ain't caught. First thought wrong. If I say it louder, they'll pay attention to me more because now more volume means more important. Turns out that's not true. First thought wrong. If I didn't get caught, I don't have to apologize. If I don't tell on myself, I don't have to change myself. First thought wrong. It's got to be your fault. I don't have to do any work. You need to change. If you did things the way I want you to do them, I'd be better off. We'd get along. Life would be simpler. That stop sign, that's not in a good place for me. Inconvenient. It's more of a suggestion at that point, is it not? Stop sign. Or speed limit. Well, surely that's a suggestion for other people, not me. I'm in a hurry. You ever run a yellow light and the guy in front of you doesn't? What's your first thought? Forgiveness, gentle, fair. Oh yeah, yellow means caution. I read it in the handbook here when I got my license. It says yellow means slow down. No. First thought, dude, we run yellows in this car. Yellow means yes, go faster, all of it. And I get a little bit of the red too is mine, by the way. Ah! You ever tell that guy in the mirror, even though he can't hear you, exactly who he is? Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm on my way to church. Jesus hates you. That's my first five or ten thoughts at that point. First thought can be long, wrong, and strong. It can be years of one thought about that one thing, that one person, that one event. I won't let go of it. That's part of the reason I do comedy for a living. I have a different lens than most people to look at life, perceive the truth or my version of it, and I write humor or develop some kind of comedy or funny based on that look, that first thought, and what that means to translate to you or how I'm going to translate that to you, right? Comedy is based on the element of surprise. Well... A lot of times, I'm the one that's surprised by my first thought. Case in point, FTW. First thought. Exactly. Soccer practice. My son, five years old. Grayson Lundholm. He's at soccer practice, and the coaches are late. They're a half hour late. Then they're 40 minutes late. Then they're 45 minutes late. I'm counting first thought, second thought, third thought, fourth thought. Wrong, 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 wrong. I'm losing my patience, and I'm livid. I look at my watch, 48 minutes we've waited. We're going. A lot of the other kids had left already with their parents. Grayson is kicking the ball around with two other kids like there's no care in the world. You know how kids are when they're five. It's just about right now. I said, gee, let's go, buddy. Dad, our coach didn't show up. I said, yeah, that's why we're going. Your coaches didn't show up. He goes, I hope they're okay. Oh. I felt like Satan's little nephew. I hate myself for what, 48 minutes into it, not once did it occur to me, I hope the coaches are okay. I want their family dead in a house fire. I hope they're in an accident. I hope one of them got hurt really bad because they put us out and inconvenienced me time-wise. This is my TikTok, buddy. My kid, my thing, my first thought wasn't anywhere near as pure as that boy's. Dad, I hope they're okay. Can we call them? I said, I've called them a bunch of stuff already, buddy. We should just get going now. Turns out one of the coaches had lost his driver's license in court. The other coach couldn't make it. This guy couldn't drive himself. He was a former criminal. 
No one should understand that better than Grayson's father. I've paid a lot of price for a lot of wrong thought, and this guy would understand that, but I couldn't understand his position until I had it explained to me by a five-year-old boy. Dad, I hope they're okay. One of the highlights of being able to do the Mark Lundholm show is to invite the guests I want and pick the parts I like and uh, segments that uh, I'm attracted to or passionate about. Here's one of those. My boy Grayson is, uh, is a passionate kid. He is uh, spiritually gifted. He is a whole bunch of things that I hope you believe about your kids too or believe about you when you were a kid. Grayson's Corner is a segment of the show that gives a perspective that belongs to a teenage kid. Nowadays, in this world, in the climate we're in, and the, uh, uh, the many, many, many levels of experience we have, it's nice to know what the young people think. Here's where we get a chance to do that. Good kid. He's funny. Uh, his mom is spectacularly good looking. Thank God that I had a phenomenal partner to make this kid. Ladies and gentlemen, Grayson's Corner. When it comes to schoolwork and stuff, my mom just kind of lets me be, lets me get it done. And if I don't want help, she doesn't give it to me. She just leaves me alone, you know? Okay. Like, but then at your house, like, I'm trying to do homework. And I have to admit, sometimes you are the biggest pain in the Because you're like, hey, you need help, you need help, you need help. <laughs> and then... Oh, on top of it, it's my least favorite part of anything, is when you make me check the homework. Oh, yeah. And then you get me on the little <laughs> if I can say that. <laughs> well, you did say that. That's how but it you're like, came out. So why isn't this period a perfect circle? Like, there's a tiny little indent right there, and it pisses me off. There's a communication. I like something. <laughs> right? So they're communicating with me, but the connection is stronger if we are communicating, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a personal opinion that you can't talk enough, right? Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people won't tell you that that's really the way they like getting along. <laughs> I got I got two ex-wives that'll tell you. And hey. a son. <laughs> you jumping on that train now? Just saying. Did she just ask me a question? Isn't uh, honesty the best policy? Communication, right? You're right, you're right. Boy, where'd you learn that? You got a good dad. So, um, what I'll tell you is I got two XYs. And a son. That'll tell you. <laughs> you know what? He uses a lot of words sometimes. When you were about four years old, I picked you up from school. And uh, we were walking. We were living on Cronwell, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd walk home. And it was one of the greatest times of my whole life was... Yeah. Walking my kid to and from school. Yeah, and I would scooter back and forth. You would raise your scooter and I would try to keep up, right? And you come out of the yard at school and he said, Dad, can I ask you a question without a long conversation? <laughs> and I thought, that dude gets it. He's already. <laughs> when I went home and told your mom we had to get a bucket because she wet herself. I'm making that up. She laughed so hard because her experience was guess what? That joke, that story just connected you and her forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I still wish I would ask you that sometimes. It was, sometimes you need to ask me that. <laughs> I use a lot of words, but that, that connection was instantaneous between you and her because the experience was he throws a lot of words at us sometimes. And already at four, you were going, whoa, 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 whoa. I just want to answer that's not going to take it's me. It's brief. It's yeah. to the point. So... Sorry. Go no, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to tell a little anecdotal, hilariously funny story, but that's not why we're here. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you speak sarcasm, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Let me ask you a question. If you suffer from depression, do you think you should drink alcohol, which is a depressant? No. <laughs> tell me what doesn't make sense right there. <laughs> Adding more depressant. To the depressed. Oh my gosh, yes. You know how many people who suffer from depression are also alcoholic? No. Besides me? <laughs> There's a bunch of us. We'll throw gasoline on a fire and then wonder why the house is burnt down. <laughs> how do I 
what you said earlier, make it safe and not be mistreating them with a question that could sound selfish. Like, how do you like your life? Tell me about me. You know what I'm saying? A, a parent could get caught in that trap. How do they not do that? Just start off with basic questions. Hey, how was your day? You know? Hey, did you like your day at school or whatever? What did you do at school? Okay. Right? And then you form a basic relationship with them if you don't have that already. And then you can eventually get into the deeper questions. Because a good parent won't ask a question that serves them. I know that one for sure. I hope I don't break that rule, uh, that self-centered that I can be. Uh, I want confirmation. I want a pat on the back. And a, but I, I don't want that for being a dad. I, I, I would love that for being a comedian. I like that for doing uh, certain work I get to do when I'm talking to groups. I want to add a boy, right? But I don't need that from being a dad. I want to serve as a father, right? So what is it about... Uh, how about this? I got a game. You want to play? Sure. All right. You're the dad, right? You're the parent. And I'll be the kid. Now, you ask me those questions you just told the parent to ask you. And I'm going to take, I'm gonna take the tough, hard side as a kid, all right? But you don't quit on me, and I won't quit on you, all right? You're the parent. Those questions you want were... Bop, 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 bop. Go through those. And I'll be the kid. Let's see how you do. This is a test for... Because this happens to some parents and kids out there, but I want to take the other side. Go ahead. You're the dad now. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Okay. All right. So, um, just like, what was your favorite part of the day? Um, I don't know. Okay, well... Why don't you take a minute, think about it, and ask you... Why are we doing this? <laughs> you, you see what I'm doing? Yeah. B because that, listen, people get like that. Let's just keep going. Ask me a couple more. And don't quit on me and I won't quit on okay. you. Okay. You can laugh. It's all right. It's a hard gig, right? There. Yeah. It's hard not to, uh, 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 you know, break character. But go ahead. And be sincere. I, I know you're a good dad. I know you. I'm just trying. But I'm that kid who can't trust yet. Go. Okay. So, um, I mean, where's mom? <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? It's it, it's a. <laughs> how I was mean, your if day? If you want to do this how, role play thing, I mean, we could do this. Go I mean, ahead. Like, right. okay. Well, mom just up and left. Grayson's Corner, everybody. Bye bye I've always been a huge fan of movies. Uh, I spent my life lost in the TV or in a theater, trying to escape what was really going on in my own life uh, from time to time, right? One of my favorite parts about this show is the movie pick, and uh, it's a clip from a film I really like, really respect, or maybe didn't understand and need some help with, right? This particular episode, the movie pick is from Lord of War. Nicolas Cage was a huge star at one point, and this particular film is a great, great story about a guy who sells all kinds of arms to anybody. Anybody who's at war this guy wants to supply. He doesn't have political affiliations. He doesn't judge. He just sells. I'm not judging. I'm just selling. This is a quote from the movie Lord of War. At four and a half months old, a human fetus has a reptile's tail, a remnant of our evolution. Maybe that's what I couldn't escape. You can fight a lot of enemies and survive, but if you fight your biology, you will always lose. My experience or my opinion is this, that I think developmentally, it's required of us to look at what we're doing well, work on that, and what we're not doing well, work on that. There's some animal in us that says just survive. Well, I'd rather thrive than just survive. I love that quote, and I take it to heart. I think about that a lot. I was born a certain way, but I don't want to stay that way today 
So I have this idea about life that is very simple. Each person is a jigsaw puzzle in a box. 1,000 pieces, 5,000 pieces, 10,000 pieces. Uh, I think as little kids, maybe we have four or five pieces. As we get older, there's more pieces in the box. And we try to put them together a piece at a time. Some stuff is clear early, some stuff not till later. But here's the thing about a dysfunctional family. Anybody out there, the rest of us, uh, not normal, uh, in recovery, all those distinctions. No matter what side of the fence you're on, uh, brought up well, taught well, uh, not so well. Uh, I'm not judging anybody. I'm not telling you who you are or who raised you. But there's two kinds of puzzles. One jigsaw puzzle has a bunch of pieces in it and a picture on the box to follow. The other puzzle doesn't have a picture or has the wrong picture for those puzzle pieces. I'm a dysfunctional family guy. The only thing worse than coming from a dysfunctional family is living in one, staying in one, or recreating one. That I've learned the hard way many times. But dysfunctional families try to put the pieces together of the puzzle they've become using a picture that's not accurate or no picture at all. For instance, uh, I work with a lot of inmates, soldiers, uh, patients, clients, uh, students, a lot of groups who are at least confused by their upbringing or their trauma or their history or their mindset or their chemical use. As I work with them, I'll always ask them a question. Well, who was your example? Who was your example? Who was your teacher? Who was your trauma? I'll ask them one of those three questions and sometimes all three. Now, for me personally, the pieces in the puzzle box didn't match the picture on the box. Uh, I, I couldn't make those work. I couldn't look at that picture of manhood, brotherhood, fatherhood, motherhood, sisterhood, womanhood. I couldn't look at the pictures that I had been raised with of the people that raised me and have those pieces in the box there. The pieces didn't fit for the pictures that I saw. It was very confusing for me early on, and that confusion led to a couple of things. It led to criminal before truthful or chemical before spiritual. That confusion led to the information and the education that says, Mark's not a good guesser. Anybody else out there not a good guesser? I guess I'll do this. I guess I'll try this. I guess I'll say this. I guess I'll talk like, act like, feel like, I guess badly for me. That's just for me. First thought wrong? I guess. Eh. I don't guess anymore. I ask. This is what I've learned to say as an adult. Two things that are very important. I wish I'd have known this as a kid. I just didn't. I wish I'd have known this as a child. Turns out I didn't learn it, even try it till I was an adult. I know how to say two things now that everybody, everybody can benefit from. I don't know, will you help? Those two things, that's part of why I'm doing this show. I don't know a lot. I can't help everybody, but I'll tell you what I love. I love language. I love turning a phrase, writing a story, telling a story, or putting words together in an order that weren't in that order ever before I touched them. I try to do the best I can to put things into words that either we're not supposed to talk about, we're afraid to remember, or can't possibly believe someone else will understand, ever. That's what I'm doing here. I'm glad you're here. A couple of closing thoughts here. Um, there are certain gifts or tools or assets that everybody possesses. Um, we talked about that a little bit today in the show. What I'd like you to know is a couple of things um, that have worked for me. If they work for you, cool. If not, you can find a different tool. Shortcut, shortcut, not less work, shortcut, straighter route from here to hero, straighter route from now to wow. Uh, shortcut, what you give energy to will continue. For you younger people, what you put your toes on goes on. Anything you direct yourself toward, you're going to find yourself in the middle of, you know? Where you point yourself is where you're going to find yourself. If you just want to know what you know, you're going to go where you always go. I have found that to be true over and over and over. As a comedian, I keep writing. I keep trying to evolve. 
as a human being, I'm trying to get better at the gifts and uh, less use of the defective version of that tool, right? So here's one for you. Somebody once said, the only thing that's constant is change. Well, for me, I can tell you that change is a challenge and challenge is necessary because shift is necessary. If I don't grow, I got to go. I'd rather move forward than backward. All that stuff that we talk about, the platitudes and the preaching and the here's what you got to do. And let's holster that. Here's what I know. As I grow, I get to help. The guy who's not as far along the path of, let's see, uh, emotional maturity or spiritual connection or telling the truth with a little bit of funny in it or being honest when it's important and when it's awkward, right? That's all good human stuff. There's a lot of that in this show already. You can do this too. Try this this week. A little challenging thought, a little closing thought here. This week, add some humor. This week, add some, hey, you know what? It's awkward, but awkward leads to different information, which leads to growth. So when you're challenged this week, slow down. Look for some humor and do it till you through it when it comes to the challenge. Here's the looking forward to the episodes coming up. We're going to give away t-shirts, coffee mugs, my authenticity. We're going to sell everything, right? Uh, I'm kidding about the mugs. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have guests. We're going to have movie clips. We're going to have sound bites. Uh, we're going to do modern topics. We're going to do hot, hot arcade items. We're going to do bright and shiny object. We're going to do a whole bunch of things that I know people will look at fast, like right away, and pass on, right? This is an infusion of Mark L. First Thought Wrong Blood. I hope it takes. I hope you guys are ready. Um, I'm going to sign off the way I'm going to sign off for every episode, okay? Hashtag be first. Hope, grace, gratitude, love, patience, kindness. If you don't see some out there, be some out there. Come on back. We'll see you later.